Hello and welcome to episode 259. Right, for this video guys, I have travelled all the way up north, two and a half hours drive, and I'm back at the Bluebell Lakes complex. Uh, I've not been here since, what was it, summer last year when I was on Mallard Lake. Uh, for this session, I've pitched up on Sand Martin Lake. So uh, when I got here, went to the shop, got me a little sticker that you have to put on a bucket. And then uh, done a sort of a walk of the complex. Uh, I really wanted to be on Kingfisher Lake, but you know, I'm doing a lap of Kingfisher Lake. It was completely rammed. There was like three swims that was available on Kingfisher and all, they was all like the corner swims that only had like 25 yards of water available to them so you know I didn't really want any of them corner pegs. I had a look at Swan, I had a chat to some of the guys on Swan Lake they said uh, it's been fishing really tough and in about the last week or so that it had only done about three fish that they'd heard of so I thought well Swan's out the question and if it's fishing difficult uh come round to san martin which is what i'm on now and then um yeah there's uh it's probably got the least angling pressure of all the lakes i can see around me so um so yeah so i've dropped in onto san martin lake so we're basically on the road side of san martin for those of you who know bluebell lakes so i've literally got the van parked right behind the camera nice and convenient and I'm pretty much central as well to the lake and probably just off centre probably the swim to my right is probably probably centre of the lake so but the wind is kind of blowing from that far corner to this near corner so I've kind of got the wind in my face a little bit and kind of blowing down this way so it kind of made sense to kind of be where I am but yeah it's nice and quiet there's no anglers in the, like the two swims to my right or two swims to my left so it is nice and quiet at the moment uh, and then once I'd picked San Martin went back to the shop paid for me fishing said yeah I'm on San Martin and matey in the shop did say you know the whole complex has been quiet for the last week or so so um yeah it's just like you know we're autumn now the cold snaps are you know coming in the nights are cold and these you know this bit of cold snap we're having is a uh, he was saying it's just turned the fishing off not just on this lake but the whole complex so that's great not been here for over a year when i do decide to come <laughs> the uh the fishing has taken a bit of a downward turn but hey ho we're here now Except Bivy's up, swims in a bit of a mess, so I need to crack on, get the rod sorted, and uh, yeah, start this uh, four night session I've got ahead of me. Let's go fishing. Right, guys, so we are almost ready to get fishing. The uh, bank sticks and the lines are set up, the rods are together but not rigged up, up against me bivvy. Uh, first thing I want to do is just have a bit of a feel around with a marker rod. Uh, from what I know from the few times that I've fished uh, here on San Martin before, that is really deep out there. So uh, I'm not expecting to find any weed, but I'm just going to have a bit of a bit of a mark around just to see if there is any way. And then just for uh, curiosity sakes, we will uh, then raise the mark float up and then uh, just see how deep it is out there. But uh, yeah, I'm not looking for spots so much. And the reason for that is, I'll, I'll go into that later in the, in the uh, session. I just want to know it's weed free and pretty much wherever I uh, put my rigs that they'll be uh, 
fishing on a, a weed free lake bed but yeah I'm not going to be fishing any particular spot this session I'm just going to kind of go with the flow but we'll uh we'll, we'll go into that uh you know in a little while in the video but anyway Only just dunked down then, and it went down with a pretty solid bump. <laughs> yeah, that's coming back nice and easy. Tiny little bit of half dead silkweed, but definitely not something I'm going to worry about. Dunk. <laughs> Takes ages to dunk down. Coming back with absolutely no resistance whatsoever. But anyway, as I said, I know this is a deep lake. Even though the water levels are down at the moment, we will just out of curiosity sake see how deep it is out there at the moment. All right, that's two foot. If you think that's not two foot, you'll have to look at my old videos to see what I call that two foot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 16 and a half, 17 foot deep. <laughs> but yep, yeah, that's all the marker work I'm going to do, guys. That's all. That, although that didn't seem like a lot of marker work. The only information I wanted from that was was it weed free because it's like 17 foot deep out there there's very little if any photosynthesis going on and therefore little to no weed growth so right time to go and get the rods rigged up right guys so after a lot of flapping around setting up camp uh, I've got a lot of kit with me, I'm here for four days so I've got everything in the kitchen sink with me this session. But yeah, the rods are now rigged up, baited up and ready to go out. So, my plan of attack is I'm going to fish one rod down the margins, down the left hand side here. And then I'll fish two rods out in open water. Reason why I'm going to fish one down the uh, margins is because on one of my sessions here a couple of years ago, I saw the uh, the biggest fish in the lake come out from literally the margins up against the reeds. A fish known as Tilly, or I think some people call it Bad Attitude, but it's a big common, it's over 50 pounds, and because I've seen it caught from the margins before, yeah, I'm going to have one rod down the margins so 
I'm going to start off this session with uh, lead clip rigs, uh, fluorocarbon D rigs. Something a bit different about these, but we'll look at them later in in the video. I just want to get the rods out for now. So uh, yeah, I'm literally just going to wander arm swing this one down the margins, guys, and then. Hopefully, hi guys. Second rod to go out, and uh, he might have had a little sneaky peek already just down here. And as I was saying earlier on, the reason why I'm not particular about exact spots I'm going to fish it's because I've got a bait boat with me and it's not my old bait boat it's the new actor one the uh, one that's uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the original actor bait boats that had like a, a small hopper in the middle and then a smaller another smaller one at the back now this is the new one that's uh, just one big single hopper. So, why have I got this, you might ask me, this particular boat? Well, basically, my old uh, Wave Runner shuttle, I just didn't really get on with it. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd have a change in bait boat. I'd seen some people with uh, this particular bait boat, like the look of it, like the price. And, you know, I bought the bait boat uprated metal propellers and a bag and all that was just 403 quid so um yeah quite reasonable as bait boat prices go so yeah so that's why i'm not going to be too particular about where the rods land because every rig that goes out is going to have some boilies pellets and whatnot out in the boat so uh so i've already had a quick play with it because like this is its first outing so i just had a quick play with it just to kind of familiarize myself with the controls and what have you uh yeah right let's get the rig in it let's get some bait in it and then uh let's get the rod out with it, you know, first proper go with the boat the new boat and yes, I do have a waiver on a shuttle for sale if anyone's interested. Right guys, first proper go with the boat. So one of the features I, I quite like about this boat over my old boat is that the controls are just one-handed. It's all uh, you know just on that little remote. So what that enables you to do is sort of hold the rod in the other hand and control the line going out with my old boat. I didn't like the fact that some you know, big loops of line fell off and I've tried various things like putting a sponge in the rod ring eye to control the line. I had that ridge monkey clip that goes on the reel. None of them are really 
got on with, but uh, yeah, the fact that you can hold this in one hand and the rod in the other hand is uh, one of the plus factors that kind of made me buy this boat. Taller trees in the distance, right in front of my uh, rods that I'm going to aim for. fingers as the rig's dropping. Again, another advantage with this one-handed bait boat. Third rig is in the boat. Same again, handful of pellet, handful of boilies. And I'm going to aim just to the right of little taller trees out in the distance. Again, no particular range because, you know, wherever it lands, I've got the bait in the boat that's going to land with the, with the rig. big plus about this boat that uh, you can use a boat and fill the lead down <laughs> put all new line on my reels yesterday at home as well the uh, line it was on my reels was starting to go a bit rough and a bit wiry bit bit twisty so uh, yeah all my reels have got all nice new line on them now so as for fishing Time to tidy up me camp and then uh, I can have something to eat because we're sort of early afternoon now and I've still not eaten yet today. <laughs> I could probably tell that. <laughs> that guy, so, oh, see if I can silhouette myself, there we go. So, uh, yeah, so it's just gone five o'clock, which means the rods have been out for about three hours now. So, uh, I'm not expecting anything to happen within three hours. Not on this tricky, sort of difficult venue. But, uh, yeah, might take three days to get a fish. Not three hours, but, uh, yeah. One thing I forgot to do is, obviously, the bait boat went out with a middle and right hand rod. So bait went out with them too. I haven't put any bait over the left-hand margin rod yet, so, uh... Oh. That's one of the boilies I'm feeding this session of the seafood. I've got a mixture of 15mm, 12mm and dumbbells in there. All seafood, they've all been glugged as well for, uh, extra attraction, but... There's a swan down there at the moment, but you ain't gonna get the bait because even straight off the reeds it's really deep. But 
So, yeah. Um, I'm not going to touch the rods anymore. Obviously, the rods didn't go out to like, say, two o'clock. So, you know, although it's just after kind of like midday, I don't see the point in redoing the rods this evening just to refresh baits that are only a few hours old. So, so if nothing happens during the night, then we'll start redoing the rods with fresh bait and what have you. But yeah, got the sun right in my face, so yeah, blinding me a bit, but so hey ho guys. Right, anyway, like I said, as I'm not doing anything else tonight, the camera will probably get put away and then um, come back out if on the off chance a uh, fish does slip up and pick up one of my rigs. Uh, so yeah, so we'll probably see you tomorrow guys. Alright then guys, so it has just gone midnight, I've been in bed a couple of hours and we've got our first fish on the bank. It's uh, come on the right hand rod. wasn't a rip-roaring take or anything like that it just kind of it was more like a bream bite it was, the bobbin just kind of went up went down went up went down not didn't take any line off the reel or watching the rod for a little bit but yeah I wasn't sure whether it was a take or not but, but yeah then on the fight it took out my middle rod I thought maybe a 20. Uh, landed it for oh, this is a 30. <coughs> it's not a 30, it's a 40. <laughs> 41 pounds 10 ounces, guys. <sighs> Look at that. First fish on the bank on the first night, and it's a 40. 41 pounds 10. Woo! How about that, guys? That's a. Uh, it's not a PB, but it's a PB for a mirror. How's about that, guys? Oh, Christ! about that guys oh 41 pounds 10 <laughs> I can't even remember what hook bait it was on guys because I've got new hook baits from Hinders that I'm using this session and uh, I can't remember which one I put on what rod so until I get that left hand rod in in the morning I'm not sure what the hook bait was, but they're all new hook baits from Hinders that I'm testing this session. Let's have another look. <laughs> yes. Oh, new rigs, new baits. How about that, guys? <laughs> oh. Right. I think that's all you're going to see of her, guys, because oh, it's aching my back. 
and I've got to do me photos yet. How's about that for a first fish? A 40 plus. <laughs> well, good morning everyone. Night one out the way and uh, yeah, the blank is out the way. Pressure's off for the rest of the session. So, uh, yeah, after you saw me with that fish last night, I had to sort two rods out. Didn't use a boat, I just um, cast them back out. So, uh, yeah, well, it's one o'clock in the morning. I can't be bothered messing around with the bait boats. It's just easier to cast them out, but... They went roughly to the same area where I caught that fish from. But anyway, yeah, so obviously I put them pictures up on me social media last night. You know, after I got the rods back out. And uh, I've had some comments on the pictures from people who fish here. Saying it's a fish known as Cluster. And apparently, it's the biggest mirror in this lake. So, <laughs> so yeah. That's not bad for a session, is it? Catching the biggest mirror out of a lake. So, yeah, yeah the, the only bigger fish in here now are commons. So, if I get one of them, that would be, that'd be nice, because, uh, yeah, that mirror last night's only six ounces off my overall PB for a carp. But, yeah, but it was my mirror PB, so, you know, that's not bad for a, for a session. Yeah, thoughts of plan. More of the same, I think. Why, why would you change when you've had the biggest mirror out of the lake? <laughs> so, um, this morning's plan. Breakfast, hot drink. It's very, very cold this morning. But, uh, yeah. Wind the rods in, facility visit, rods back out, same place, same baits. Yeah, why would you change when you've had a fish like that, eh? Hi guys, so I've uh, had my morning facilities visit and the rods are soon about to go back out. So I've just rebaited the rig, so off I'll show you the, the bait and the rigs that I caught on. So also for this session, uh, Steve in Hinders, when I popped in to uh, go and pick up some pellets, that I uh, wanted for this session. Steve handed me three pots of hook baits, which are these three pots here, guys. Some new wafters that are on that he gave me to trial. So, I mean, they don't have names or anything yet. They literally are brand new and on trial. So. I need to refer to me phone on the uh, Hinders page for what they are. So the black hook bait is a loaded pellet, loaded halibut wafter. The red one is a loaded krill wafter. And then the one I actually caught on last night, the washed out brown, is uh, it's just called loaded pellet which is shrimp and salmon flavoured. So that's the one I caught on last night. And then the rigs themselves. Oh, where's me packet? Um, for this session, I'm trying something new from Gemini Tackle. Use a bit of their stuff now, mainly their uh, inline lead inserts. But Gemini have done something new. And that's Booms for D-Rigs. I saw these, I thought, ah, get a couple of packets of them, give them a go, because, you know, it's basically an everlasting hook link. I thought, you only ever need to change the hook when you hook blunt, so I thought, ah, give them a try. So, as well as new bait, new boat, new rigs. Well, new rigs, to a point, if you get me. So, so that's the rig, guys. So you know it's not their normal Gemini boom, and then it makes a nice little, nice little D there. So you can 
probably make out just a, under the swivel. There's a little hook bead on there. When I was setting these up for the first time, I didn't put that bead on to begin with. And um, it, the, the deed just didn't sit right, so I referred to uh, the Gemini YouTube channel where I saw Matey setting these up and he put the little bead on. As you can see there. And once you put the bead on, it sort of clamps the D to the shank of the hook and then holds the D in a nice shape. So, yeah, so a size 4 choddy hook. I tried it with another hook and the uh, this is just too stiff. It kicks the hook over too much. So, choddy hook, size 4. And then, as you can see, barbless as per fishery rules. So yeah, and like I said, the loaded, the loaded pellet was the one that caught me that fish last night. So uh, word must have got around because I've already had a few people come round and congratulate me. Say it's one of the, not just the lakes sought after fish, but the complexes sought after fish. So uh, yeah, that's a nice little bonus, knowing people have been after that fish for years and I just pop along and <laughs> yeah so anyway right so that's everything new new hook links new bait new boat and the combinations put me a new PB mirror on the bank right let's get these back out hopefully we'll get that 50 pound common that's swimming around in here <laughs> or would that just be greedy <laughs> Hi right, guys, so we're almost ready to put the first rod out. Rig is already in the boat. Another one of the little features I like about this boat that I forgot about yesterday is that the, the hopper doors, there's a little cutout right at the back which is just big enough to put like leaders and tubing through where other boats I've seen, and certainly my wave runner, you had to kind of trap the tubing or leaders in the back of the hopper. Where, yeah, this one's got a nice little little cutout, just big enough to put put that in. So that's a, a nice little touch. I like that. So yeah, I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did yesterday, guys. I no other reason, no reason to change tactics. I'm full of boilies, scattering of these four mil pellets, probably uh, PVA bags worth of pellet. And, uh, yeah. Get it back onto that spot where we caught that fish from. All right. I think today I'm going to have a go. Yesterday I was driving the boat with me left hand. I think today I'm going to have a go with me right hand. Just see if I to see if I can control it a bit better. Yesterday I was a bit all over the place with it, so we'll have a go. See how we get on driving it right-handed and still a left-handed. But then I might get in a bit of a fuddle because it means I've got to control the line out with my left hand. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I can definitely control the boat better this way round. Rod left hand, control the right hand. Alright guys, so 
middle rod has already gone out, we've done that one off camera so not to make the blog too long. Same as yesterday, left hand rod, I'm just going to pop down the uh, my left hand margin down the reed line. This one because it's going to be sort of hitting the water, I've just popped a little PVA foam nugget on it just to make sure the D doesn't slip when it hits the water. But I've got my wellies on, I can get a bit more, um, a bit closer to the reeds. Yesterday I didn't get as close as what I would have liked to. because that one's gone out by hand. We'll uh, just chuck boilies by hand over that spot. That's it. Day two, fishing has commenced. Afternoon guys, we time here I've got just gone four o'clock so yeah so rods have been out or you know redone out you know for several hours now obviously nothing's happened but there's, there's not even been any any uh signs of anything showing or anything it's been quite quiet all the activity that that has happened has in showing fish it all happened during the hours of darkness uh, yeah I mean one good thing about this side of the lake is that the uh, where you put your bivy is kind of sort of six foot higher than the level of the water so being up here you get a good view of the the lake as you, you know rather than looking across the lake you are kind of looking down on it a bit from up here so you do get a good view of the lake and yeah there's there's nothing boshing or showing i should imagine it will all happen after darkness again but with these autumn evenings you know we're getting we're dark by seven o'clock now so we'll redo the rods in about two hours time so that they're all done with fresh up baits for going into the night all right good evening guys Right, let's come to that time where I'm going to redo the rods now for the night. The sun is just above the tree line horizon on the far bank. So, yeah, going to put fresh hook baits on for the, for the night now. A little bit of old silkweed, that's a... Yeah, that's probably coming on the retrieve rather than anything else, but 
But yeah, so yeah, we're redoing the rods for the night now. So you know, I'm gonna fish the same spot. No reason to change. For the sake of uh, controlling the line, I think it is easier to do the control in your left hand and hold the rod in your right hand. You can control the line off the reel a little bit better. Well, I can anyway, being right-handed. Yeah, third and final rod for the night, guys. Hopefully. I can drop it in roughly the same spot I did last night. So we're not doing any wraps, any clipping up. The line's not marked with any elastic or anything. I'm just dropping it where I feel is right. Right there. And bombs away. And down there it goes. Right, I think guys, rods redone on fresh hook baits for the night. So, see if we can get that 50 pound common now. <laughs> everyone and uh, yeah welcome to the start of day three well technically if I go by the hours I'm fishing my day three doesn't really start to sort of midday but um, yeah quiet night last night nothing happened no bleeps nothing the fish were active again last night or through the night, you know, I woke up at random stages through the night like you do when you're fishing and the, the fish were boshing out all over the place, you know, right in front of me, even right in front of the rods. It was a, you know, it was a full moon a few nights ago, so it's still almost a full moon at the moment. So, you know, when the moon's up, it's certainly bright enough to see the lake without a head torch on and um, so when the fish bosh out in the middle of the night you can uh, you can you know clearly see where they're boshing out and yeah they are sort of right in front of the rods open water you know off to the right you know all over basically so they were definitely active last night but um but yeah, just obviously no pickups. You know, it is cold. As you can see, last night I had to don me thick neck jumper and me woolly axe. It got really cold last night. Whether that's uh, affecting whether they're actually sort of feeding on mass or not, I don't know. But uh, but yeah, nothing happened one way or t'other anyway. So yeah. So, on the agenda today, breakfast first. Uh, we'll have a facilities visit, have a shower today. Like I said, we're on the we're on the bank for four days in total. So I can manage two days with just wet wipe washes, but you know, after a couple of days, when you still got two days on the bank, you know, you need a shower because you're going to get a bit whiffy. So shower then we'll redo the rods i might change tactics today if i do i'll go into why and the changes when i do but yeah first on the agenda breakfast
nice hot chocolate to uh, start the day off guys, warm up a little bit. That stomach doesn't taste right about it today. special milk in it. <laughs> well, hey guys, so that's me all clean and refreshed, back from the shower now and uh, yeah time to get the rods back out. So when I was uh, bringing the rods in I was saying I was going to do a tactic change and I sure enough am and uh, the reason for doing a tactic change is because when I was bringing the rods in well not so much on the margin rod that was coming back fine but the rods out in open water were coming back all clagged up in that dead and dying horrible silkweed not even the nice green stuff that horrible black yucky stuff the lead system was clagged up in it the you know the hook and bait end was all clagged up in it and fishing on the bottom on the wafters didn't fill me with much confidence of possibly getting another bite. So, um, you know, that, them Gemini booms are good with the D-Rigs. You know, they've proved they're worth already in that fish I've had. So, so yeah, so we're going to change rigs so that at least the hook and the bait is now popped up. And that's, you know, the good old Ronnie rig. So, there we go. So, for uh, the day part of today, I'm just going to cast them out and fish the singles. I was going to use the boat, but um, when I went to the shower, chatting to a father and daughter couple down the corner, and this morning they've had a fish be um, each, not between them, a fish each, doing exactly that, just casting out singles instead of putting out bait. So I thought, well... I was going to change to Ronnie's anyway, I was going to use a boat, but when they said they've been catching, just casting on singles, just casting randomly, I thought, well, I'll try that as well, see if it works for me. So, yeah, good old Ronnie rigs have come out to play. Uh, nice yellow high-vis 12mm pop-up. And that'd be the same on all three rods. I'm just going to cast them for the day. And then if uh, if nothing happens during a day, I'll use the boat this evening just to, uh, you know, entice fish to the spot. So, yeah, like I said, we're not clipped up or nothing. We're just going to um, cast willy-nilly and, yeah, just fish them as singles in random areas. Sounded like a big wind knot went out, so we will bring that back in. <laughs> but that shouldn't have happened. As I said earlier in the blog, I put all new fresh line on these rods the, the day before I come fishing, so we shouldn't be getting wind knots. It should all be good, untwisted. Oh. Oh. It sounded like a wind knot happened, but there is no wind knot, so I don't know what that was all about. Yeah. Went out with a nice sounding cast then. Alright, rod number two guys. Again, 
all three rods are just going to be cast randomly so they are just fishing as singles as I said. Probably a bit more to the right than what I wanted it, but that's okay. We'll just make that our right hand rod. The wind has done a uh, switcheroo today. It was blowing from the right to the left as you look at the screen. Today it's now blowing left to right. Alright guys, third and final rod, which is now the middle rod. <laughs> And guys, I'm just going to re-chuck my left hand rod, seeing we're just fishing the singles at the moment because um, the fish haven't been showing during the day and, until the hours of darkness, which makes sense, doesn't it? But um, yeah, one just has boshed out, literally seven, eight wraps just in front of where I'm fishing. So, because I'm fishing singles at the moment, I'm going to um, wind this rod in, obviously, and cast a show in fish. Right. So, try and chase the fish a little bit. Yeah, pretty much about exactly there. Right, good evening guys. And as you can probably tell by the uh, sort of dim light, we are sort of moving into the third night. Probably be dark in half an hour. So, I've already done the uh, right two rods. I didn't film them because we've just had a bit of rain on and off so I didn't want to get the camera out in the rain obviously, don't want to ruin my camera so a uh, few changes I've made for this evening's part of the session uh, first off, we're still on the Ronnie rigs only I've switched up to a 15mm uh, bait instead of the 12mm bait that we were fishing with uh, during the day today uh, mainly because obviously a 15mm bait is more buoyant than a 12mm bait. Tonight's part of the session is going to be longer before a recast is done. So, you know, I want baits that I know are going to be more buoyant and stay popped up right through the night. Uh, the second change is I've not gone out quite as far with the uh, two rods on the bait boat I've probably only gone out about 10 wraps I've been hearing quite a few people say on this lake although I fished it before and they're probably right that you don't need to fish as far out as what I was so yeah again it's only an estimate you know I'm not clipped up not marked up but yeah roughly 10 wraps out and the third change is with when I put the boat out Rather than putting loose feed just in the hopper of the boat, I made up a couple of PVA bags um, with uh, different size pellets in the bag. So a big size bag and then uh, two different sizes of pellets. Put a pebble in each one just so it could uh, drop down to the bottom of the lake. So the blue, you know, where I was putting loose pellet in before, it was probably getting a bit spread out and I wanted to keep me loose free feed concentrated around the upbait so put it in a PVA bag, put a pebble in the bag should all drop down lovely together so so not major changes but just you know kind of little twists on what I'm already doing just to um, 
adapt to the situation and as before the third rod is gonna stay in close because why wouldn't you when you've got a nice reed line down the side here so, uh, Is it then guys all three rods now out for the third night out of the four I'm on here guys hopefully these few minor little changes can bag fish number two hi right. good morning chaps and chapesses. So, looks like the change in tactics worked because we have another fish on the bank, guys. This fish has impeccable timing as well because it's just been raining. I've woken up to a, the rain hitting my bivvy. And uh, yeah, it just kind of stopped raining when the uh, when this fish went off. Not as big as the first one, <laughs> you know, about half the size, but absolutely gorgeous, scaly looking. How about that, guys? To money? Oh, come! All right, calm down. You can go back soon. Come on, I don't think she's gonna. But how's that about that, guys? 22 pound on the nose. So, yeah, but look at those two big scales in the middle of that flank, guys. Absolutely cracking looking fish. Uh, yeah, so we've had the 20, we've had the 40. We just need the 30 now. And then the 50, I'm not greedy. But, yeah, this is taken on the middle rod. And as I said, when the rod went out, guys, oh, come on, come on. As I said, when the rods went out, guys, they, uh, yeah, the fish were showing closer in. And yeah, and obviously, we put the rods only about 10 wraps out, changed to the pop ups on the Ronnie rigs. And it's uh, done the trick. Took a 15 mil beat banana pop up. Yeah, the rod's already back out. Because it's barbless rolls there, I managed to unhook it in the margins and then ping the rod straight back out. So, uh, yeah, lovely, lovely. So, let's have one more look at the other side. That's it. I think this side with the two big double scales down its flank look absolutely amazing. Come on, be good. How about that, guys? <laughs> All right, that's enough. Let's get her back. Well, good morning guys, and um, yeah, that's nice to have another fish on the bank. So, uh, yeah, woke up at pretty much eight o'clock again when the gates to the complex had opened and the streamer cars come running in. But yeah, since I've been awake, I've just been kind of stood looking at the water here and uh, looking at signs of um, feeding fish. 
There's a little patch just up to the right of me here, probably, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 wraps out. There's a little patch of fizzing just out there where fish are uh, clearly feeding. There's another patch. Oh, and a fish just rolled just there, if you saw that, guys. So, um, so yeah, so even though I had that first fish, sort of, you know, 15, I'm guessing 15 wraps out, obviously, with a bait boat. Yeah, most of the boshing and showing, and certainly the fizzing I'm seeing this morning, is more or less at the range where I've been fishing and caught that fish from last night. So, um... So yeah, so my belly's telling me I'm gonna have to wind in soon, guys, to um, go and use the facilities. So, but yeah, I think when the rods go back out, we're definitely gonna continue at this range I have been fishing, that's for sure. And probably more off to the right as well, looking at what I can see. There's definitely more signs of shown fish just off to the right here, so. I think, yeah, there's some really nice fizzing signs there. The only problem is if anyone goes to the swim to me right, they'll probably see it as well and want to um, put a rod on that as well. But, but yeah, it's uh, good signs, good signs this morning that there's feeding fish and close in. Look guys, first thing this morning, it's not too cold this morning, but I will start off the morning with me um, morning hot chocolate just to get some warmth into my body. And then, um, yeah, I think we'll get the rods in, put some fresh hook baits on, and certainly get them out there more in the right hand direction. Because the... Uh, that's both the right hand and the middle rod have done bites now out in open water and the left hand rod hasn't. I think for this uh, sort of final day's fishing, we'll abandon that margin spot now and get all three rods fishing out there. Right guys, uh, in the meantime, while I've been making me a uh, hot chocolate, I've still been watching the fish kind of happily fizzing, feeding away. And uh, sure enough, the inevitable happened as I was watching the water, a fish boshed out sort of just off to the right. You know, I said I was going to push me rods a bit more right when I redo them. But just as that happened, Another lad was walking around with his bucket looking for a swim. He saw the Bosch in front of the swim to my right. Bang, down went his bucket. So, uh, so yeah, so my uh, plan to uh, push me rods a bit further right has been scuppered. And, uh, yeah, he's just gone up to the shop to go and his money and while he went up there I did go and stand quickly in the swim to me right and where all that kind of fizzing is that we've been watching it is more in front of that swim to the right so so there is still some fizzing kind of you know on the outer skirts of my swim but where the majority of that fizzing is it is in front of the swim to the more right so yeah, so yeah, someone's been walking around with a bucket, seen the Bosch, then seen the fizzing, that's on that spot afterwards. Yeah, Dal's got his bucket, so, I mean, fair play to him, that's what you do, isn't it? You see signs of fish, that's where you put your bucket down, that's where you set up your camp, so, it just so happens to be next to my swim, that, so, Hey ho, so yeah, 
So there's um, plans to go right, like I said, been scuppered. You know, we still have fizz in, in my water, just not as much as what I can see to the right, so it's not all doom and gloom, but there's definitely a bit more fizz in out to the right. Right, so that's that then. <laughs> And guys, so as much as it pains me to have to wind the rods in, I'm going to have to in a very few short moments because of, uh, you know, nature calling and all that. A majority of the, that fizzing that was showing this morning has kind of stopped now. There's still one little patch off to the right about, I don't know, seven, eight wraps out that's still going. So when I come back, that's definitely going to be a, a spot. And as I said earlier on, I'll probably abandon the margin spot now because three days in virtually and uh, it hasn't done a bite. And as we've seen, the two bites they have had have come from open water. So, um, yeah, we'll stick all three rods out in open water when we get back. So, uh, yeah, time to wind the rods in, drop the kids off at the pool, and then uh, you know, start again when I get back. Good sign is that where I'm fishing at the moment, closer in. No horrible silkweed clagging up the rigs. Right then guys, so we are ready to get the rod back out for, well, I suppose it's really the start of the fourth day's fishing. And uh, yeah, we're going to stick with the close range fishing because of, especially with the amount of uh, activity we've seen this morning, the bubbling fish, showing fish. It's the most bubbling fizzing that was I've seen up to now while I've been here, so uh, yeah, we'll stick with close in fishing. So we're sticking with the same rigs and bait that we caught last night's fish on as well. You know, Ronnie Riggs, 15 mil. Uh, beaten on the pop-ups. And I'm going to bait up the boat the same way as well. And that's rather than putting the uh, feed in loose. I've made up uh, solid PVA bags just for the the four mil pellet I've glugged it up a bit with a little bit of oil and because obviously there's no lead in there like you would be when you're casting a PVA bag out I've put a pebble in there to weigh it down to make sure it it sinks down with when the rig goes down The line's not twisted around the rod tip again, like we did yesterday. Oh. About a little push head start. It's probably not even 10 wraps out, guys. It's probably more like 
eight, nine wraps. But they're basically aiming for a swim on the far side of the bank. Now that we have a chap in the swim to the right hand side, I've been round to chat to him just to make sure that where I'm going to put this right hand rod doesn't interfere with his left hand rod. It doesn't, so we're all good. And we would drop there. And down the rig goes. Lovely, jovely. And then, good thing about this boat, the hoppers are on motors, so you can close the hoppers after you've dropped your payload. Right, so that's it in guys. So the fourth day's fishing has just commenced. That's it. We only watch one rod going out. I don't think we need to see every rod going out every time when it's a four day blog. Don't need to make the blog too long with watching every rod. But yeah, basically now all three rods are now out in open water. I say open water, they're not, they're eight, nine, maximum ten rod lengths out. Hard to judge when you're just sending it out randomly, but yeah, left hand rod is now pretty much dead ahead, middle rod is slightly off to the right and uh, yeah right hand rod is as dare right as I can push it now really with someone in the swim to my right now but once I dropped it I did go and see him and say that didn't interfere with you did it and he's like no not at all so so it just means that where the majority of the fizz in was showing I am now fishing in so right time to kick back chill relax and hopefully I can get number three but I won't hold my breath during the day I should imagine if number three does come along I should imagine it'll probably be tonight again Good evening guys, well, I say good evening, late afternoon, five o'clock, whatever you want to call that time of day. But yeah, quiet as for the fishing side of it during daylight hours, as it's been for the last three days. But there has been a lot more signs of daytime activity today. It's also been a lot warmer today, hence why I'm still in a t-shirt. Whether that's had a, an effect on the fish showing up a bit more. Today's the first day out of all the time I've been here. Fish have actually been boshing out during daylight hours. And uh, you know, signs of actually fish still kind of fizzing. There's still been like patches of fizzing fish. But yeah. It's getting to that time where probably in about 45 minutes I will redo the rods for the night just so I've got plenty of time to get it all done before the light starts fading away for the this fourth and final night. But yeah, we will uh, employ the same tactics. I'm not going to change anything. We'll employ the same tactics as uh, last night, you know, like caught me that fish. So again, close in, Ronnie Riggs. 15 mil yellow pop-ups and uh, I've made up some more PVA bags of pellet to go in the boat to go down with the rigs. They're a nice kind of fist size. Again I've put a pebble in each one just to weigh it down to get it down to the lake bed quickly before the PVA melts. So uh Yeah, I'm not uh, hemmed in at all by the guy who's turned up to me right. He's fishing sort of well within his water, so I'm still sort of got all the water I 
I have been fishing, it hasn't affected me at all. So I'm turning up on the right hand side, which is, which is good. But uh, yeah, so fourth and final night. You know, up to now, I've all, I haven't felt confident, you know, that anything would actually happen. Even though I've had two fish, I wasn't really expecting them, but because we've had two fish now, and there's been more signs of daytime activity, I am feeling confident that um, fish number three can come along tonight. So, anyway guys, right, like that, 45 minutes wait. Six o'clock, we'll redo the rods. Right then guys, so as we can see, we are getting the rods out now for the fourth and final night of my session. So getting the rods out, as you can see, I've already done my right hand and middle rods, guys. You know, every little effort to try and Shorten my uh, long blogs. So, yeah, so this is the third and final rod, guys, just about to go out. And, uh, yeah, like earlier on, we're going to ignore my margins now because it hasn't done a fish and just fish open water relatively close in with it going to be fishing i think the middle and right hand rods have only kind of gone out seven or eight wraps this time so and as like before just made a pva bag full of four mil pellet it's uh got a stone in it to help it sink down in this deep water I might fish this rod even a bit closer in because during the night, last night, some of the fish were uh, showing really close in, guys. So, yeah, we might put this one out even closer. Right, let's untangle that line from the rod. There we go. And out she goes so dead ahead this one and I'm sure some of you might say you don't need a bait boat to uh, go that short distance yeah and you're probably right but I don't care because it's my new toy it's less disturbance Yeah, we're literally going to fish that close in on the left arm rod because that's where we saw fish showing last night in the hours of darkness and in the early hours of the morning while I had that fish. So, you know, hedge me bits and all that. Oh, good morning people. I'm awake bright and early this morning. <clears throat> Early enough to see this uh, lovely morning mist rising off the lake. I was woken up by my bladder requiring to water the surrounding foliage. <laughs> but yeah, quiet night last night, guys. I mean, there was a bit of boshing last night from the fish, but compared to the first three nights, the... Uh, the boshing activity was fairly quiet, so um, for whatever reason, I just don't think the fish were that active last night. I think because they were quite active during the day, they were less active last night, and yeah, I didn't have so much as a bleep or nothing. So, oh, I swap hands with my camera, 
so, so oh, the moon is up somewhere. Where's, uh, yeah, the uh, sunlight is just starting to rise behind the camera. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, I've woken up to a dawn chorus of <laughs> someone over there spotting at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, I don't know about you, but on waters like this, where kind of bite time is kind of night time, dawn and dusk, you don't start spotting first thing in the morning. This isn't a hungry runs water, this is a water where you set your stall out, bait up, put your rigs out, and sit on it and wait. If this was a runs water with lots of fish, lots of hungry fish, then yeah, spot away, but this isn't that sort of water. I mean, yeah, there are big fish near that are hungry, but certainly in my eyes, not enough to warrant <laughs> getting up at first light and start spotting away and spooking the fish at what's bite time. But but hey-ho, right, that's my little rant. <laughs> So anyway, I think there's a chance of any more fish personally has come and gone, guys. Seen all the activity and bites I've had have all happened at night time, during the hours of darkness. I think now it is kind of daylight, albeit a mottled kind of hazy daylight at the moment. I think any more captures chances are has come and gone but you know it's not over to the fat lady things today is pack up day I'd say it's seven o'clock in the morning now and my fishing time really ends about one o'clock lunchtime so we still do have sort of six hours worth of fishing yet I'm not gonna touch the rods they can just stay where they are I think even with the bait boat and the little disturbance that the bait boat makes I don't want to disturb the water any more than I have to especially when I know on previous nights the fish have been coming in really close so unlike Mr Morning Spotter over there I'm not going to disturb my water Well, another quick update. How far I say, yeah, I've said it already. Today's pack up day, and I think I'm glad it is. It's uh, eight o'clock on the dot. The uh, the road coming in behind me was like the M25. Absolute stream of cars and vans coming in for their weekend fishing. Uh, on Mallard, right behind me, I think I've got about half a dozen builders' vans all uh, fishing on Mallard. And uh, if you can hear that, I don't But anyway, yeah, they're all hammering bivvy pegs in with claw hammers, so. Yeah. Yeah, the nice sound of claw hammer on bivy peg in the morning. So, um... Yeah, I don't think they're here for the fishing. I think it's going to be their uh, weekend piss up. <laughs> the fishing might be secondary for that lot behind me, I think. Uh, anyway, forgive the uh, rain on the lens. It has just started a bit of fine rain. I'm just having some breakfast at the moment and uh, I'll probably start a slow pack up because um, I can't imagine the sound of claw hammer on bivy peg is going to do the fishing any favours. Alright, that is the end of the video guys. Uh, I've only got the rods left to bring in now, everything else is all 
packed away and ready to shoot home. Obviously, always leave the rods to last to get every opportunity you can to get a bite, but yeah, as soon as I've finished this bit, guys, the rods are coming in. That's it. We're, we've not quite fished to the one o'clock that I'm, I'm allowed. It's only 11 o'clock now, but, um, but yeah, there hasn't been much signs of activity this last sort of, you know, last night and this morning. There's been a few signs of fizzing right out in the middle of open water. But uh, yeah, what with the activity going on behind me, sort of spooking every cut for a mile around, probably certainly didn't help put it that way. But uh, yeah, but in conclusion, this session has been a brilliant one. I've tried out some new kit, what with a bait boat. Absolutely loved it, brilliant bait boat for the money. Highly recommend it, even though I've only used it once. Brilliant, I absolutely love it. New Gemini D-Rig booms. First time using them, got a PB mirror on them. Can't fault them. New bait from Hinders, test bait from Hinders. First time using it, again, got a PB mirror on it. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and then we had that bonus backup fish of 22 pounds, so all good. You know, I was happy knowing how hard the lake's been fishing, not just the lake, the complex. I would have been happy with one fish. So the fact that I've got two fish, one of them being my new PB mirror, bonus. Absolutely brilliant. Right. I don't know when you're going to get to see this video, guys. It won't be for at least two or three weeks, because tomorrow I'm packing suitcases. And then um, early hours of Sunday morning, I fly out to Rome for a week with the missus for a little holiday. So, thanks for watching guys. I know it's been a long one. I've tried to keep this one as short as possible, seeing it's been a four day session. But if you've watched this all, thank you very much. Appreciate the views. Till next time, tight lines guys.